All right, welcome back, boys and girls. Oh, we got a lot to talk about today. So, for those of you who have been following the spoilers for the new Digimon TCG set, set 11, BT11, we've been getting some really awesome cards just from the first couple of days of spoilers. And oh, oh, today is no exception. We have got our first retrain of Machine Dramon 6 EX1. Now, not only do we have a lot of really awesome new support coming in to help the archetype out, but we've also got our first actual Machine Dramon card since we've gotten originally the card that began the archetype back in EX1. And we've gotten two different Chaos Dramons in that time, but this is the first time we've gotten a new Machine Dramon since then, and I've got some mixed feelings. We're going to talk a lot about the new effects that are coming out, uh, and I'm going to just go over some of my initial thoughts on how I think some of this new support is going to affect the archetype. Uh, I do have very mixed feelings. I think some of it's really good, some of it's kind of eh, uh, but we'll talk about a little bit of about each card. As you can see on the screen here, we are going to be beginning with the, not technically Machine Dramon support, but we all know it's also Machine Dramon support, and that's going to be the brand new Metal Tyranimon. Now, before we do get into this, I want to make sure I clarify, obviously, spoiler season is still going on. There's still going to be more cards spoiled, and I personally am hoping that this is not the end of the new Machine Dramon support. It's a good start, though. Um, but we really are hoping for some uh, lower to the ground cards. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that we'll get Rookie Champion and Dare I hope, a new egg that we can support the Machine Dramon archetype. But uh, until we get a confirmation on that, we're just going to go over the stuff that is currently leaked. I had to make the video because when I saw that new Machine Dramon get spoiled today, I just... Ugh, I wanted to talk to somebody about it, and then I realized, I got a YouTube channel now! I can make a commentary video on it, so that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to get right into this first card. Um, this Metal Tyrannomon is actually really cool. I'm excited for this card. One of the more awesome, I think, easy to splash cards that we're seeing so far to help support the Machine Dramon archetype. Um, to begin with, it is 8 to play, 8,000 DP, and 4 to Digivolve, which is, seems to be becoming standard on a lot of the actual board presence bodies that we're getting as uh, our level 5 cyborg slot. So think like BT9 Mega Dramon, BT8 Metal Greymon, the new Structure Deck Volcanomon that's going to be coming out shortly in September. Um, all those cards are seeing a 4 Digivolution cost into a body that is made to be a respectable, beefy body while it's on the board. This guy is no exception. And he's taking in that direction that I'm really enjoying with a lot of the more recent cyborgs, which is actually encouraging you to build and use those cyborgs in play. He has both an on-play and a wind Digivolving effect. Where for each green or black tamer that you have in play, you can suspend one of your opponent's Digimon, then one of your opponent's suspended Digimon can't unsuspend during the next unsuspend phase. Really awesome for board control, really awesome for suspending down a pesky memory blocker or something like that, so you can go over floodgates. Really, really cool there. I'm not, not game-breaking by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely a nice uh, little effect there. Definitely good to use in play. And it has the ever-important inheritable all turns, which is also important, once per turn, when this Digimon deletes an opponent's Digimon in battle, you can then trash the top card of your opponent's security. Whew, this is this is a real valuable one, guys. So first of all, trashing security is always super strong. That means if you hit a tamer, they don't get it. Option, don't get it. Big Digimon, bigger than you even, they don't get it. So being able to trash their security rather than just check is super, super valuable, and this is the first time we're seeing that effect getting introduced to the Machine Dramon archetype, so a lot of excitement there. Um, another thing that's really important to notice about this is it says all turns. So let's say that we have a Machine Dramon with Blocker Reboot. If we attack into something, trash their security, unsuspend. If they try to swing in on the next turn, or there's any way that one of their Digimon is um, deleted in battle with this Digimon, well, then you get to delete another security. You can potentially do it on both turns, so super, super valuable. This is definitely a really cool card. Um, it's an uncommon, which means got that pre-release foil to look forward to. I uh, really like the artwork. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next card, and for me, probably one of the most controversial ones, and that is going to be the new Tamer, Analog Man. There's a lot to unpack here. Um, so this is a 4-drop Tamer, who unfortunately is not a memory setter. If this card was a memory setter, oh my goodness, if, if we were completely replaced that first start of the main phase effect with memory setting, this card would be so much better in my opinion. Um, it is for to play. At the start of your main phase, you may trash a level 5 card with Cyborg and his traits from your hand to gain a memory and draw a card. Oh, it's, like, it's like so close to being really good. I think this ends up coming off as a lot it's basically a worse version of Kazu, unfortunately. That first part of the effect is super... I shouldn't really say super. It's it's situational. 
It's if they were to replace all of that with trash a level five cyborg, gain, uh, set your memory to three and draw a card as kind of like a new revamp on the memory setting mechanic, I think that would be actually a lot better. Uh, just gaining a memory really, really seems lackluster on a four drop tamer. I'm having a hard time kind of wrapping my head around that effect. It's really unfortunate. It also is doing that thing that I mentioned in my Machine Dramon videos before where it requires a specific level 5 cyborg. I was really hoping a lot of the new support was going to stick to the theme of any machine or any cyborg. That makes the deck a lot smoother. Not having to hold your cyborgs up in your hand all the time to pitch to these effects. It, it can just be a little more awkward, a little clunkier to play around. I'm not saying it's bad. This could actually be end up being a very strong tamer because of that effect. It is at least nice that it does replace the card by drawing you a card immediately after, so it's not like you're losing card advantage. But having to keep a five card, uh, level five cyborg in your hand every single turn if you want any memory, uh, that uh, it, it heart it heartbreaks. It really does. I was hoping this card was going to be able to do a lot more. The first time we get a, uh, a tamer outside of Kazu that really directly supports the archetype, I was just hoping it was going to be a memory setter. But this is what we got. No worry. No point in in dabbling in the what ifs. The second effect, however, is significantly better. So on the opponent's turn, when your opponent attacks a player, meaning your security or you, you can suspend um, this tamer in order to force that Digimon to instead attack your level 6 machine. This is important because it lets us get around suspend effects. This is the big thing Machine Dramon has been struggling with, even in the recent um, recent metas, while it's starting to get a little bit more teeth behind it and become a little more popular, suspend effects are still our worst nightmare. Things like Grandis Kowagamon, Imperial Dramon, those are still some of our worst matchups. This is a card that finally lets us kind of get around or at least play through a lot of those suspend effects. So if you have a big Machine Dramon blocker in play, suspend it, well, you can still suspend this tamer and force a particular attacker into that machine instead. Really nice synergy with that Metal Tyrannomon that we just looked at, which is really cool. I just, I wish this tamer was just a little bit different. It feels like that close to doing really well. And who knows, there may be other support. Like I mentioned, we're hoping for more machine Dramon support coming out from BT11. Um, the fact that we've gotten the support that we've gotten so far it makes me hopeful, but I'm not going to hold my breath. I just... What this, I feel like we really need is either a rookie or champion that can play this card out from your hand. I think if we get a champion similar to a lot of the other archetypes where by digivolving into the champion, you can play Analog Man from your hand for free, I think that would be a nice boon. Four costs for what this does just feels real bad, guys. It, it's good to help get around Tamer Deletion effects, things like Black War Greymon. It's better than three because they can't hit two of them and all of that kind of thing, but... I don't know. I feel like if this card was a 3 cost and had all of the same text, it would be just as fine. Like, I don't think that would actually make it broken or anything like that. As it stands, I think it's perfectly okay. I could see a lot of Machine Dermon decks maybe trying a copy or two, but again, this is all kind of speculation. I'm going to need to see the rest of the, the set and see how things pan out. But it's definitely interesting. It's definitely got my, uh, my brewing juices going here. Um, very interesting, and again, I really like the direction that they're kind of taking the archetype. So, I'm going to say this is at least a good sign, a good start. Um, yeah, it just, it just feels a little bit clunky. Um, so again, kind of mixed feelings about that. But moving right along, the first actual just straight up black cyborg we've had spoiled from the set is going to be a very quick talk. And that is the second ever copy of Gigadramon. First of all, once again, love the artwork. It's also an uncommon. Gotta get that pre-release foil. Um, it's very simple. Seven to play, 7,000 DP, three to digivolve, all very standard. But this guy's got jamming, which is real cool. There aren't too many black cards that have jamming, um, and there's definitely not any level five cyborgs in black or red that we have had with jamming up to this point. This guy seems really cool uh, in the sense that you can put him over an EX1 Gargermon and basically swing almost completely scot-free now. Um, we've already had some pretty beefy bodies that can swing and get the Gargermon trigger off, but this is the first time we've actually had jamming on a cyborg. That's really neat. The ability to try to recycle and reuse those Gargermon effects is really cool. So I'm excited about that. And then the Inherit Bull is just reboot. Um, we'll wait and see if the translation changes anything, but currently it just seems all turns reboot. Now, uh, as soon as this card got spoiled, uh, the Machine Dramon Discord that I was in immediately lit up with talk about BT2 Metal Greymon. I talked about it in my deep dive video because originally the only reboot source that we had was Metal Tyrannomon from EX1, which only gives reboot on your opponent's turn. Unfortunately, BT2 Metal Greymon only gives security attack plus one while you have reboot on 
your own turn. So that interaction didn't work. So instantly everyone's like, oh, well, this, this is awesome. You know, we got to use the BP2 Metal Greymon. It may be, end up being a thing, um, but I'm going to caution everybody now. This is probably not going to be more than a one, maybe two of, in a lot of Machine Dramon decks. And you are definitely not going to want to play more than one of BT2 Metal Greymon. I still don't think it's a good idea to run that card. We're going to have Volcano Mon by this point, long after this point, actually. And Volcano Mon is just strictly better. Um, feel free to brew, as always. Of course, you guys probably seen on this channel, I built some spicy stuff. I'm still going to strongly suggest that we probably try to avoid BT2 Metal Greymon, even if you can make the effect active. It's about making that effect active consistently, and I don't think this is enough to do that. I still think it's going to have no text in the inheritable box a lot of games, and you really don't want that on your level 5 cyborgs. That's the whole point of the deck, is having impactful inheritables. So I would strongly suggest, at this point, don't get super excited about BT2 Metal Greymon. There are so many other better inheritables by this point you're not going to have room for it stick to the better stuff that's my suggestion anyways moving on we've also got uh, an option card now i'm not super high on this card i'm just going to say that up front i think it's cool looking that's, that's some phenomenal art absolutely 100 super super cool looking uh, it's called dg dimension i'm sure this is probably a reference to something in digimon world please forgive my sin i have never actually played digimon world but i have at least seen some gameplay of it understand some of the gist but i'm not super familiar if this is referencing anything i apologize um but this is it's it's interesting uh, i'm gonna read it out so we have when you would use this card if you have a black camera reduce the memory cost to use it by one it's okay um Unfortunately, I feel like going from 8 to 7 is not a super great effect. Now, if this was reduced by 1 for every Black Tamer in play, then we'd be cooking with something. Maybe there's a translation, and that is the effect. The translations that I found basically just say, if you have a Tamer in play, reduced by 1. 8 to 7 does not seem like a big enough jump to really be worth it. By comparison, you have like a guy of Force 0 that's running around right now, where you're making the jump from 8 to 6. That 2 memory is a little more significant. It's weird because, so back in my Magic the Gathering legacy days, there was a friend of mine uh, from when I used to live in Maryland who said something to me that I will always remember, and that is that if you are playing spells from your hand, two is always going to be twice as much as one, which sounds like a very simplest, like, uh, 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 duh, right? Like, it sounds like a very obvious uh, line of reasoning there, but it it matters more than I think most people assume it does. So when you're talking about lower memory costs, the difference between... Two and three, three and four. It matters a lot more because you're going to be able to choke with those low levels of memory. When you're talking about the difference between eight and seven, it's not going to be super significant. Like, let's be real. Unless you're on six memory, you're not going to choke them with this. And you're not going to get to six memory very often. So realistically, you're still going to be passing them a nice big chunk of memory. At a certain point, I don't think <laughs> I don't think those numbers matter anymore. If I pass my opponent four memory or or you know, if we're talking about the difference between giving them six or giving them eight, like that, that's still a lot. That's going to be enough for your opponent to do a lot with their turn. So I'm a not really high on that uh, reduction effect. I don't think it actually matters a whole lot. Again, could be wrong. Um, but the effect that you're actually getting for this cost, you can choose three of your opponent's Digimon, beat Digivolve them by one, and then delete up to three of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost of six or less. So this is sort of kind of a side grade to how the new Chaos Dramon from EX3 is going to wind up working. Basically, you're going to be able to de-digivolve three things by one, but this comes with the added benefit of deleting as long as they um, lower to a play cost of six or less. The problem is, I don't know how many times you're actually going to be able to de-digivolve -digi -digi three things and pop those three things. What are the actual odds that that's going to come up? I'm honestly not sure here. So... It's really going to end up depending, I think, on how the meta winds up shaping out. This could wind up being a pretty good card. Reading it from our current perspective, obviously, our meta right now is a lot of high stack stacks. Think Alphamon, think Grandis, Wargramon, Metal Guru, Mon X. So I don't think in our current meta this would do a whole lot of anything. By that point, I'm honestly not sure. I think we're going to kind of have to see how our meta shapes up. Because our meta thus far has been very different from the meta that we're seeing over in Japan. Um, as ban lists get updated and things like that, we just have access to different cards and we progress different ways. Plus, we've demonstrated that we over here in the States maybe just prefer different decks. Different things are more popular than they are over overseas. I know that in Japan, um, D-Reaper didn't do a whole heck of a lot when it came out and 
because thus far, unless I'm wrong, still isn't doing a whole heck of a lot. Meanwhile, D Reaper's been taking stuff down over here. It's actually become really popular all of a sudden. It's been doing really well. Just because I guess Japan kind of play tests everything and then we kind of innovate once it gets over here. I don't mean to say that they don't innovate over there too, but you understand what I'm saying. Like it's they've had a chance to kind of see what the deck does, and by the point uh, the time it gets over here to the US and it really it's in the States. Um, we've had that time to kind of see how the architects play out and people kind of innovate and try different things that maybe weren't tried over in Japan, so we see different metas. So by the time that the, uh, the set comes out, BT11, maybe this card is really good. I'm not super high on it right now, but again, this is speculation without seeing the whole set reveal, so we'll see. It, it's something to definitely keep an eye on. Like I said, if nothing else, that is, that is some phenomenal art. That is absolutely breathtaking. Gotta love that. But guys, we have arrived at the piece de resistance of this video, the card that I basically decided to make this video all about, and that is our brand new retrain of Machine Dramon. Now, I am overjoyed that they are still making new versions of this guy, and um, they are directly supporting the EX1 archetype. I mentioned this in one of my videos, complimenting some of the things that I like about the Digimon card game. I love that they are not just letting old archetypes die. They keep bringing out new support, and this is very very pointed support at the EX1 Machine Dramon archetype. I absolutely love it. Now, there's a lot to talk about this card. Um, I'm going to try and cover as many of them as I can. Um, hopefully, I cover everything and don't forget any points that I wanted to make. Um, so, this guy's 11 to drop. He has 11,000 DP. So, he's pretty standard for a Mega. 3 to Digivolve on either a red or a black. Again, this seems to be kind of the norm uh, for this archetype. Right off the bat, he has a on-play and when digivolving effect. So he's following in the footsteps, again, of the EX3 Chaos Dramon, which is super, super awesome. He's um, rewarding you for either playing or digivolving, which is a... It's, it's so helpful, and I think that's going to be the actual baseline for what we want to be seeing as we're moving forward. Um, this archetype in particular needs to have the ability to play things and get stuff, and digivolve and get stuff. Having branching... Um, lines of play is going to be very, very important if this deck wants to keep up. To begin with, on play when Digivolving. Reveal five cards from the top of your deck, add an analog man from among them, and any card with Cyborg or Machine from among their traits, in their traits, either to your hand, or you can put that card immediately into this card's Digivolution sources. That's wild. This is the first time we've actually seen the ability to add a card straight from off the top of the deck and tuck it under one of our machines. That is awesome. I am super hyped about that effect. Um, I think that is straight upside. Um, I do kind of like that they are at least in some ways encouraging the use of Analog Man. Um, it basically just a free plus one if you happen to be running this alongside that card. Is the on deletion effect that I want to talk about because it's a little awkward. Um, so on deletion, by returning one of your in-play Analog Man to the bottom of your deck, you can then play another Machine Dramon of any sort from your hand without paying its memory cost. Whew. Okay, let's get the positives out of the way, because there are some big positives to talk about. So if this guy either blocks and dies, or attacks and dies, you get to play a copy of any Machine Dramon. Obviously, we're talking EX1 Machine Dramon, for the most part, immediately from your hand into play. What that means is, if you have not done anything else with your turn yet, let's, let's say the turn passed, or even if it's your opponent's turn, this thing dies, you pop a EX1 Machine Dramon from your hand, and you instantly gain 5 memory. We are talking Kaiser Nail plays without the Kaiser Nail brick. This is so awesome that this is able to do that. I also honestly like that it's any Machine Dramon, so you can actually loop um, if this dies, you can bring out another copy of exactly this. You can bring out another copy of this version of Machine Dramon, which has the on-play that you'll immediately get to recycle. I think that's really cool, and also opens up some phenomenal um, lines of play with the EX3 Chaos Dramon, where you can bring him back out, he'll get an inheritable off of his on-play, ideally. And then you can immediately Digivolve Chaos Dramon on for one, in which case you'll get another three sources. So I think it's really cool for um, rebuilding stacks if he happens to get handled, that, however, is kind of where I have to end compliments. Even though that is an incredibly strong effect, there is a back-breaking condition attached to this effect. So you, in order to get the on-play effect to play a new Machine Dramon, you have to return an Analog Man to the bottom of your deck. Whew, that is rough, guys. So Analog Man being 
a four cost tamer. That is also not really setting our memory to three. He's already kind of clunky to play. And then you have to get rid of him just to use this effect. It's still good. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, this is this is all speculation. This could wind up being phenomenal. But my initial reaction to this, reading this and kind of comparing it to what the deck is already doing and how you want to be making plays, getting rid of your own tamer is not where we want to be. Um, that is a lot of value to be accrued. It's probably going to be phenomenal for ending games where this guy can wind up being a blocker that they can't get through without your ability to just drop a machine drum on and force the turn to pass by gaining five memory. Uh, that is absolutely a powerful play, and it's something that I'm sure will people will toy with, if nothing else. I guess I'm just nervous. Um, it, I could absolutely be proved wrong, and this could be the absolute new bread and butter for Machine Dramon. I don't know, though, guys. The the uh, force, Forcing you to return the Analog, mo analog Man to the bottom of your deck, <sighs> it's, it's going to be rough. I'm going to have to wait and see kind of how this plays out in actual practice once we've got the rest of our cards. I'm still crossing my fingers, like I mentioned. Hopefully we will get other cards that are able to at least bring Analog Man into play easier, so you don't have to pay four for him every time, which can be very difficult. I don't know, guys. We'll see. Uh, I will say, though, this is definitely a direction, like I said, I'm very happy with. I really like that this is, again, it, this is unlike the Analog Man. This is, again, going with any Cyborg or Machine. So you can touch fucking EX1 Gargermon underneath this if you so choose and get that nice little on-attack ability where you can cycle through some cards before letting him die. So let's say you just swing into security, Gargermon Inheritable. Then you just get to, you know, discard card, draw two cards, he dies, boom, Machine Dramon for five, uh, for free, gain five memory, and then you can do a ton more with your turn. So there's definitely room for this card to see play. I will probably be trying this when this, when this deck does finally come out. Without seeing any other support, I already can see this guy absolutely seeing play as a 2 or 3 of. I don't think he's a 4 of. I think the original EX1 Machine Dramon is still going to be the centerpiece of this deck moving forward. It's still currently the only one that gains memory, and it's still the only one that has a card on play for ultimately 7. 12, of course, but gaining 5, it counts as 7. So, I don't know. Um, it's also the only one that still tucks 5 materials all at once, which is definitely the biggest. Chaos Dramon from EX3 gives it a good run for its money, but... Yeah, I don't know, guys. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll definitely have to see with this guy. I like that this is still encouraging um, stack building. I do think this is going to encourage more people to be on black base than they were before. Red base, blue base, I'm sure will still exist, but this definitely seems to be pushing the archetype towards the actual black base. I'm not going <laughs> I, I still, I've of course always been a black base stand. As you guys have seen my videos, I have been high on the black base ever since Kazu came out in EX2. I think it's got nowhere to go but up. This is definitely um, kind of seems to be at least pushing the Machine Jamon archetype in a way that you want to be digivolving up your stacks, and then you're going to be rewarded with a lot more value from these newer cards. So, yeah, uh, I'm optimistic. Just wanted to take a chance to kind of share my excitement with you guys and show you this phenomenal new Machine Jamon support. Hope you guys are still enjoying the content. If you are, feel free to like and subscribe. I am blown away we have made it past 100 subscribers you guys are all super fantastic i've been having a great time engaging with you guys in the comments i got my first comment about um if i have a discord or not i do i don't have one set up for me personally yet but hey if that's something people are interested in happy to do that i'm also more than happy to set up that way we can play test i would love to play with any of you guys anytime anywhere um send me a message either on youtube uh, if i get a chance to set up a discord i will happily start putting the link to that in my videos and you guys can hit me up anytime. Let's play some Digimon. I would love that. Same goes for my Magic and my Yu-Gi-Oh fans. So with that, I want to thank you all so much for joining me again. I hope you all have a great rest of your night, and I will see you next time.